Hello, welcome. Here we are today at the TEC Training Lab in Melrose Park, and we're gonna be talking about energy recovery ventilators, or ERVs. Uh, we're gonna look at different types, some commercial ones, some residential ones, and we'll look at different heat exchangers as well, specifically rotary wheels and fixed plates. So let's take a closer look. So the first unit we're gonna look at is a commercial unit, and this one happens to be a wheel type heat exchanger. On commercial units, you typically will find wheels and fixed plates and even some other types as well. Residentially, it's pretty much be fixed plate only. You won't see any wheels residentially. So this particular one happens to be a standalone ERV, means that, meaning that it's not attached to a packaged rooftop unit, although the same technology in here can be put inside a rooftop unit and all be in one box. But this one happens to be a standalone one. So on here, we have two different hoods you see on both sides of the ERV. This one is an intake hood. So we bring in fresh air into the system and down through the wheel. And then this side over here, return air from the building, exhaust air from the building is coming up and through and exhausting out this hood over here. So let's take a look inside this guy here. And as you can see, this one has plexiglass on the front of it. That's obviously not a normal scenario. Normally there'd be a sheet metal cabinet, but here in the lab, we have a plexiglass one so we can see what things look like on the inside. You'll notice there's two fans on here, one for the intake air, for the fresh outside air to come in, and one for the exhaust air to bring air out of the building and throw it away. So we have two different fans on here. On these commercial type ones, they typically do run at different speeds in order to get the CFM that we need for each side of the equation. Residentially, there will oftentimes be one motor driving both fans and they run in a balanced airflow. We'll take a look at this guy on the inside, open him up. This is our heat exchanger here. This is a wheel style heat exchanger. It's made out of a plastic and it has a silica based gel impregnated onto it. So you probably have seen these types of packets before. It says silica gel, do not eat. Don't eat this, it obviously be very bad for you, right? But you'll find this in your electronics boxes, leather shoes, things like that. And the purpose of that is to keep the moisture neutral inside that packaging. Same kind of stuff is impregnated on top of this plastic in order to transfer moisture. It can absorb moisture or release it, depending on which airstream it's in on a given season. And that all happens automatically. There's a small little motor down here that drives this belt. And that belt turns this wheel. So air comes up from inside the building and goes to the heat exchanger and gives up its energy, which depending on the season, heat goes from hot to cold, moisture goes from high moisture to low moisture. So if it is summertime and we have hot, humid air coming in, that means we have cool, drier air that would be leaving the building, right? So then the moisture comes in here and the heat comes in here, right? And it gets transferred on this heat exchanger as it spins and exhausts back out. So instead of letting the heat and moisture go into the building, it transfers and goes back out. So we get the fresh, clean air molecules to come in, but not any of their energy heating and cooling. Right? Same thing happens in the opposite season. In the wintertime, we have cold, dry air coming in, and we have warmer, moisture air coming out of the building. That warmer, moisture air goes into this airstream and gets transferred over and then goes down into the building. So we keep the heat and moisture either outside the building in the summer or we keep the heat and moisture inside in the winter, and all that happens automatically as this heat exchanger moves. It moves at a pretty slow speed. We'll run one in a little bit here, but it's moving at 40 to 90 RPM. Right, like a record player, essentially, for anybody who's old enough to know what a record player is. Obviously, probably only me. Um, we do have two sets of filter banks on these guys. We're filtering both the air coming in and the air going out. I know it seems weird to filter exhaust air, but in this case, we're filtering the air because we want to keep it off of the heat exchanger media. We don't, we're not filtering it for human comfort. We want to keep the heat exchanger clean because if it gets dirty, it won't transfer energy as well. So we're filtering both of these air streams on here. And then going down through the curb, we would connect into the building system. There are other ways to do it as well. We can have it like a side discharge unit. We can have it connecting into a rooftop unit. Um, there's different orientations that we can have, but the general feel would be kind of like that. Let's take a look at a different style unit now. Now this unit up here happens to be a residential style HRV. HRV stands for heat recovery ventilator. It is a form of an ERV, energy recovery ventilator, but it doesn't do any moisture transfer. It just does dry energy. Residentially, you could have ERVs or HRVs and the same commercially, same with wheels, same with plates. All of them come in both forms. This one just happens to be an HRV, just coincidentally. Um, normally on a residence, we'll be ducting from the bathrooms as our exhaust source because we have to have exhaust there anyway. Usually the bathrooms and then maybe one general hallway common area will be our exhaust airflow path and that'll go through the heat exchanger and be exhausted out. 
and the fresh air coming in will typically be ducted into the return side of our furnace or our fan coil where it can then use the regular distribution system to supply the entire house. Let's open this guy up here. Luckily, I'm barely tall enough to do that. All right, so this one is a core style heat exchanger. So instead of a wheel spinning and air going through it, in this case, we have a metal heat exchanger and the two airstreams crisscross with each other, right? So that guy slides out. We have one airstream going this way, one airstream going that way. We have two fans over here with one motor in between them driving it. So both fans are running at the same speed no matter what. So how much airflow they move is a function of how much ductwork you have on each of those two airstreams. But all the ERVs, whether it's the one we just looked at or this one, will have four air pathways on them. Two ins and two outs, right? So in this particular case, let's see which one's which. This is the outside air coming in the top up here, right? Going through this way and then over to the furnace. And then we have air leaving from the furnace, going through that way and exhausting out of the building, right? So um, the airflow path moves like that. The actual heat exchange surface, when we look at it here, it's a metal heat exchanger in this case, because it's the HRV only, so it doesn't do any moisture transfer. And we have a filter here and a filter here. These are not like super high quality filters because they're not cleaning the air in your house. You have other filters for that. These guys' job is just to keep large debris off of the heat exchanger surface area, right? But if I put my hands through here or put them through on this side over here, my fingers would never be able to touch each other because it's two separate airflow paths and the air is just warming up or cooling down the plates in between. If I have, A one that does moisture transfer, it'll either have some kind of fibrous material in here or some kind of polymer, right? So this is not just metal. This is obviously a very small one. You wouldn't have this, you know, it's a demo size one. You wouldn't have this in your house. But in this case, the air can go through on both airflow paths and do the heat transfer. And then the fiber material wicks the moisture through, kind of like wicking moisture through on a string or a rope. Same kind of basic idea. All right, let's run one now and see how that goes. This is our hands-on demo unit that we use here in the training lab for our ERV classes. This is a nice one that's all set up with plexiglass so we can see inside it. It was graciously donated to us by the folks over at Air Exchange. As you can see, it has a fully operational wheel in it with a small motor down on the bottom driving that. And we have two blower motors on here. One motor here, the blower is an intake, so it's sucking air in the cabinet this way through the heat exchanger and out. The other blower over here is sucking air from the building through the heat exchanger and then out of the building. So we're gonna run this guy, and we're gonna give it a few minutes and a time lapse here to speed it up so you can see it heat up. We have a small heater down here in the bottom that's gonna simulate a hot summer day uh, for us, and we'll actually run it that way. This guy's been running for a little while now. We got a hot summer day simulated. We're 103, 104 degrees, air coming in from outside. So pretty much the hottest day you get in any point of the year. And as you remember, that airflow is going straight through that way and the clean air molecules are going into the building. But the heat, as you can see, we're going from 104 to 77, 78, 79 degrees, something like that. So we're dropping the temperature from 104 down to 78 degrees on that air molecules moving in. Because the heat's not going that way with the air. The heat's going this way taking a turn on the heat exchanger and coming back out that way. So 104 is going in, 96 is going out because the majority of the heat's going this way and only a little bit of heat's going in. And then the air leaving the building, it's coming out of the building at 77, picking up the heat from that airstream, but not the air molecules, just the heat, and it's leaving here at 96. So that's kind of how it's saving the heat's taking this path like that. The cool air, if you will, is taking that full path like that, but the actual clean air molecules are going this way and the dirty air molecules are going that way. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how ERVs and HRVs operate and what they look like on the inside. We'll see you at the next video.